All right, so this is the fourth period um, review video. So number one, for what values of x does f have a discontinuity? Well, anything that makes the bottom zero is you can't have in a in a graph. So you, you can't have negative two or two. X can't be two or negative two. And so if the function doesn't exist there, then it can't be continuous there. So the most the simplest answer to the question is it's discontinuous at two and at negative two. Now there is more to the story, but that's the answer to the question. Now I want to keep going because there there is more stuff going on and your questions were related to that. X minus three and X minus two for the top. So X minus twos will cancel. What does that mean is going on at X equals two? X equals two as a whole. X plus two does not cancel. So what's going on at x equals negative 2? A vertical asymptote. But both of those are discontinuities. They're just different types of discontinuities. So this question didn't get into the details. This question, you really could have looked at the denominator, said, can't be 2 or negative 2. I'm done. Later on, we can ask more detailed questions about types of discontinuities, like removable, right? If we cross those out, we've removed the discontinuity versus not removable. I can't do anything with a vertical asymptote. So this is a good question. It, the, it has a simple answer, but there's a lot more going on. So the answer is x is not equal to negative No, the answer would be it's discontinuous at 2 and negative 2. Okay. Where is it discontinuous? Well, at 2 and negative 2. But there's a, there's a lot going on in addition to that that we could ask about, but we didn't. John? Um, <coughs> tomorrow's a block day, right? Thursday is a block day. As is Wednesday, yes. Wait, it is? Mm -hmm. oh, look at the board. Oh. <coughs> so Mary, number two is kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's discontinuous at 5 and negative 3. There's more details, but we could stop there and just say 5 and negative 3, discontinuous. Correct. Correct. Kate? Number 4. <coughs> yes, definitely need to do 4. I, think. I know there's at least one on the test like this. There might be more than one. Number eight, determine if G is continuous at X equals five. Um, you know what I want to do? For number eight, I want to do the, uh, the formal continuity definition or proof because it asks you to do that on the test. So um, the way this is phrased, you wouldn't have to do that. You could just check uh, five for branch A and branch B. But I want to do the, the official proof, which is the function exists. So f of 5 exists. The limit exists. And then step 3, are they equal to each other? So let's, let's do this the like formal official way here. All right, f of 5. So step 1, f of 5. If x is 5, what's y equal to? If x is 5, what is... Zero. Yeah. If x is 5, we're on this branch. It's hardly a branch. It's just a point. So 5, 0. So f of 5 equals 0. Statement 2. The limit exists. So the limit, that means as we get closer and closer to x. So not like... Our, Closer and closer to 5. So not x equals 5, but close to 5. So if we're close to 5, but not quite 5, would that be on branch A or branch B? That'd be branch A. If x is 5.01 or 5.001 or 5.0000001, that's all branch A. Only when we get to 5 are we on branch B. 
So if I plug in 5, well, I get 0 over 0. So let's factor. X minus 5 cancels. So there's a hold at 5. That's probably why this is defined this way. So if I plug in something close to 5, or even on the other side, 4.99 or 4.99999999999999, then that limit as x gets close to 5, what do I get? Nope, these are canceled. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I get either 10.0001 or 9.9999. The limit is 10. It's going to 10. Another way to say that is there's a hole at 5, 10. If I plug in 5, I get 10, but there's a hole there because we canceled them out. So f of 5 is 0. So that, that's good. That's a check. The limit exists. That's a check. But the limit, or the function, does not equal the limit. So it's not continuous. A, a graph is not necessary, but maybe it's helpful. Graph x plus 5, but a hole at 5. Let's see, so that would look like a little like that. That's branch A. 10. Branch B, it's not really a branch, it just says when x is 5, y is 0. So there's branch B. And sure enough, that's not continuous. That is a point discontinuity, a whole discontinuity. Is that removable or not removable? That's removable because we could fix it. We could remove the discontinuity if somebody had put point D in the hole instead of down there where it is. Not removable are jumps and asymptotes. Like number five. Infinite discontinuity at x equals negative two. Yes, that's true. Removable discontinuity at negative one. Uh, there's a jump there, so that's not removable. I can't fix that with just a point. If you can fix it by just filling in a dot somewhere, that means it's removable. The discontinuity is removable. But I can't, I mean, I guess I could fill in that dot, but that wouldn't fix the discontinuity problem. So that's not true. Removable discontinuity at x equals 2. Yeah, that's true. If I, this dot was in the hole, then we'd be good. So 1 and 3 only for that one. Correct. Right, because your, your proposed name for that yesterday was an asymptote discontinuity, which I didn't disagree with. It's just the official name is infinite discontinuity. But those definitely go together. Anything else from worksheet, whatever worksheet this is, four? Say it again. Well, there's a hole there, but filling in the hole wouldn't fix the discontinuity because there's a jump. <laughs> right. So, yes, you could fix it by moving the thing down, but then you've changed the function, like, significantly. If you just fill in the dot, you haven't changed the graph. Yes, you could fix it if you move this down. That is true. But that, that doesn't count. That's not an easy fix. That's a that's a major fix. That's a just just slide it down. Just put a stick a minus one on the end and move the whole thing down. Yeah. Maybe a better way to think of removable discontinuity is 
when you, when you remove a factor, top and bottom, if you remove those x minus 3s, it's now continuous. That's not how you would fix that, that one we were looking at. So if you remove factors, that's a removable discontinuity. Um, let's look at the review. First page of the test looks identical to, not identical, I think the graph's different, but pretty close to this page. Okay, 17 and 18. Good question. Those infinite limits, those sometimes still give the calculus students a hard time. So this means as x goes to negative infinity, so as x gets really, really small, so on my graph, that means I'm headed out this way on the x-axis. Right? I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. What does it look like my y value is doing as x goes this way? The y value is approaching negative 5. So the limit is negative 5. It might get there. It might not. It probably doesn't. But we don't care about getting there. We care about getting close. And then on the other end, as x goes to infinity, that one is there. In fact, it's stuck there. but that's okay. Negative 3. Numbers 1 through 4? Okay. So as x approaches negative 7 from the left, so there's negative 7 coming from the left. What's the y value doing as we get closer and closer to 7 from the left? Yeah, it's going to infinity. Positive infinity which technically means D and E. But infinity is not a number, so you don't ever reach infinity. And this is why, well, I can, I can. Ms. Murray and I got an argument yesterday about which one of these answers is more correct. I thought it was D and E. She thinks it's infinity. So we started looking online. And there's math professors at a variety of universities who say either one. So that's that was the source of our confusion. Is like some people say infinity, other people say well infinity is not really a number, so D and E. The conclusion though that everybody agrees on is technically it's D and E, but if you say infinity, that's a little more informative of what's going on. That means you know it's going up. So I will accept either one on a free response answer. On a multiple choice answer, we wouldn't we wouldn't give you both because you could argue either one. So you kind of need to understand why it's both, and I would accept either one, and and be able to recognize either one on multiple choice. So two and three, in, n as we approach negative seven from the right, that would be on this side, but we're still going to infinity. But infinity is sort of does not exist. Overall, they're both going to positive infinity. So kind of the same thing. You could say in infinity or you could say D and E. There is absolutely no debate on the answer to number four. What's the function at negative seven? D and E. There is no function there. <laughs> that is definitely not the right answer for number four. It's a function, but it's not defined at four. There is no function at negative four, or excuse me, at negative seven. There's a limit there, and that's the point of talking about limits. Without the graph, you just say, oh, the function at negative seven doesn't exist. But there's more to the story, and the story is the limits of what's going on. Okay, are you good on 1 through 18? That's the picture problems. I feel like once you get those, just be careful left, right, open circle, closed circle, that sort of stuff.
Trig. Yes, I can do some trig. Okay, what's our first step on any algebraic limit? So not a picture limit, but an equation limit. <coughs> Plug it in. And hope that we get something reasonable. So tangent of pi over 3 is root 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is... One half plus four. So that's kind of an ugly answer, but root three over nine halves. So root three times keep it change it flip it two over nine. Two root three over nine. That's a weird answer, but there wasn't anything weird calculus going on. They didn't have any zeros in there. Twenty one? Wait, what happened to twenty two to thirty one? Uh oh. I just noticed that. You can omit numbers twenty two to thirty. How about that? You're welcome. <laughs> 21. <coughs> Let's plug in 0 and uh, see what happens. Uh, 0 plus 0 over 0 minus 0. So I need to hope something works because that's indeterminate. So let's factor out a 2x. And then in the bottom we can factor out a 3x. And now the x's cancel. And hopefully we can plug in x now. So 2 times 0 squared plus 1 over 3 times 1 minus 4 times 0 that would be 2 over, let's see, 1 minus 0 is 0. So that would be 2 thirds. So that was one of the, the tricks. If you plug it in and it doesn't work, you have three tricks to choose from. Factoring trick, fraction trick, and the conjugate trick. If you get 0 over 0, then you got to try one of those tricks. Yeah, that's, that's just kind of open-ended. It's like make your own limit using both G and H and find your limit. So after you do all of those that are up there, you, you basically just write your own problem. Can you do 56? Yes. Six. Okay. Uh, what's step one on all limit problems? Substitution, see what happens. e to the 2 minus 2 over natural log of 2. e to the 0 over natural log 2. What's e to the 0? 1. one. So 1 over natural log 2. That's not a nice number, but it is an answer choice, so there's my answer. So that one looked ugly, but there was no really pre cal or calculus to do. Just plug it in and go with the answer. What we haven't done yet is a conjugate one. That's 45 to 47. Or a one-sided limit, algebraically, like 48 and 49. Or an infinite limit, like 50 through 53. Question on any of those? 53 is a good pick because that negative infinity. I don't know that we did a negative infinity yesterday. 
So as x gets really, really big, um, what matters the most? 3x to the fifth in the top, and the negative 12x cubed in the bottom. Like the rest don't really matter. So that would reduce to 3x squared over negative 12. Ah, the 3 and the 12 would reduce as well, but that's not really what I'm concerned with. So now if I plug in negative infinity, and I square negative infinity, what do I get if I square negative infinity? Like a positive infinity, maybe even a positive bigger infinity, but there's really no such thing as bigger infinity. So 3 times a positive big number divided by negative 12 I see where the 1 fourth came from. That's not right. So is my answer, what's my answer? Negative infinity because of that negative 12 in the bottom. Well, and because we squared away the negative right there. When x goes to infinity or negative infinity, that's when the only thing that matters are the biggest terms, and you go from there. And if it's negative, you got to be extra careful. Because you're, you're worried about whether it's positive or negative infinity, and so the negative is what can mess things up. Forty-eight or forty-nine? Maybe forty-eight and forty-nine. The sided limits, but instead of a picture, it's an equation. Like the picture is not too bad, just coming in from the left, coming in from the right. But an equation. Well, what's always the first go-to for a limit problem? Substitution. So two minus two over 2 minus 5. And I'm not really even worried about the from the left part yet. 0 over negative 3. 0. We're OK. We are OK with that. That's 0. All right, 49. Let's plug in 2. 2 minus 5 over 2 minus 2. Negative 3 over 0. Yeah, that's no. And so, like, before this unit, you would just say, no, can't do it. But now we're getting a little more detailed here. So it's not 2 fifths or negative 2 fifths. It's not 0. If there's a 0 in the bottom, that means there was a vertical asymptote. That means we're headed to infinity or negative infinity. But now I need to be to figure out which one it is. So I need to plug in something a little bit less than 2. So 2 minus 1.9999999999. So the bottom is close to 0, but is it positive close to 0 or negative close to 0? Positive. But that negative on the top means we're headed toward negative infinity. You use that little, that little bitty sign tells you which way to go. 2 negative means less than 2. <laughs> 2 plus would mean a little bit more than 2. So you just pull out the negative I mean, if you wanted to do some algebra stuff to this first and rewrite it as negative x minus 2, like that, you could. You you'd still end up with negative infinity eventually. More continuity, more Ks, more proofs. 
So well, we still haven't done absolutely one of everything. Anything else? What else would you like to see? Uh, okay, fixing by conjugate. So that looks like 45, 46, and probably even 47. Is there one of those you'd like? 47. 47. All right, job one is plug in. So 1 plus cosine of pi over sine of pi. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Sine of pi is 0. So this is its like worse than no. It's like indeterminate. I don't know what's going on. So I need to fix this one. What should I multiply by to fix it? Yeah. The conjugate, 1 minus cosine x. So in the top, we get 1 minus cosine squared x. In the bottom, I probably want to leave it factored because I've done enough of these to know that I hope something cancels. A squared. That squared. There's something with squares in it. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So that means that 1 minus cosine squared is positive sine squared. If I move the cosine over, I get sine squared in the top. No, we're not. Yeah. So let's see. The sine will cancel. Or one of the signs will cancel. Now let's uh, try to substitute again. Sine of pi over 1 minus cosine of pi. Let's see. Sine of pi is still 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. What's 0 over 2? 0. the OK problem. So there's all that work to find 0. <coughs> what else would you like to see? multi-part problems like 59. It's really three problems in one. Or 62, another three problems in one. <coughs> let's do 62. I didn't do 62 earlier, so let's do it. Do it now. Is it the packet and the review yes. Jump discontinuity. Which ones have a jump discontinuity? Okay, so the potential jump is at four for all of these. So for f of x, I need to check four on the a side and on the b side and see if they line up together or not. So, like, the a side of f at 4 would be 4 squared minus 2 times 4 plus 3. 16 minus 8 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. For the b side, 1 half, 4 squared, plus 4, minus 1. So, 16 divided by 2 is 8. Plus 4 is 12. Minus 1 is 11. So those are equal to each other. So that is not a jump discontinuity. Those are connected. Let's 
let's try the same thing with G. So the the A side of G at 4, 2 times 4 squared minus 3 times 4, 16 times 2 is 32, minus 12 is 20. And the B side of the graph at 4, 2 times 4 plus 4 squared, 8 plus 16 is 24. So those are not equal to each other. So there is a jump at 4 for function g. So let's see. f is out. So anything that has f in it is, is out of there. So it's down to g or g and h. Um, wait. This I didn't have to do anything for this because at... This might have a discontinuity, but it's not going to have a jump discontinuity. The, the worst it could do is at 4, it's got some hole. And maybe, it's like, that's all part A. Part B fills the hole in, but I don't care if the hole's filled in or not. It's not a jump discontinuity. So... Without doing any work, I don't know if it's continuous or not, but I definitely know it's not a jump. So that would be G only. Again, I'd have to do some more work to figure out if it's discontinuous or not, but I don't really care if it's discontinuous or not. I know it's not a jump. At worst, there's a hole in the graph. Again, the review is very similar to the test.